versus crab legs. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh! What's going on everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of Fung Bros Food. Me and David are in the East Village of New York right now and in case you guys don't know, there has been an explosion of Chinese restaurants over the past year. And as Chinese guys, it is our duty to try as many as we possibly can. And these places are serving a lot of regional Chinese food that people out there are not even familiar with. Well Andrew, if there are a lot of spots that we haven't tried, then let's get to it. David, our first spot of the day is on First Ave, called Just For Fen. Fun. It's a play on words. Let's check it out. Yo, right here I have the spicy chicken noodle. And I have the number one, which is the most popular, the beef rice noodle soup. I gotta shout out to Guizhou, because Guizhou as a province obviously doesn't get a lot of press. Mm -hmm. It's like Sichuan food, but more sour. My name is Shirley, I'm the owner and the chef for Just For Fan. I am originally from Guizhou. I just wanna bring my hometown food to the New York City. The beef Guizhou mi fen. It kind of reminds me, it's almost like a Chinese pho. It's more sour and light. Look at this broth. It's not, it's not red or brown, it's very light colored. I love this dish because it's spicy chicken, but it's not any regular spicy chicken. It has a very like deep smoky flavor and the oil that they use, it's slick, it gets onto the noodles and it's just easy to eat. Here I have this cold mung bean dish. Let's see if this tastes anything like the spicy chicken dish that I just had. This is completely different. <clears throat> Ooh, that's, spi that's spicy. Oh, this is good. That's spicy though, let me get the... Ooh, you hear that? You got a lot of spots to go, man. You gotta calm yeah, I gotta, down. Yeah, I gotta chill. You gotta chill. chill. All right, I'm gonna chill. We have a tang yuan here, which is the rice dumpling dessert. Because it has that fermented rice taste, that's what I mean by it. Almost feels a little bit like alcohol. All right, let's go to our second spot, Dunhuang. We have just got to Dun Huang. The food is on the table. Before we even get into this, we gonna need some help. Hey, yo, no. Yo, man, thanks for having me. You just finished shooting a basketball video. I did, as you can see the bit, and I'm ready to hoop up. Eat have up. you ever seen any of this food from Lanzo, China before? Nah, man, I mean, what am I even looking at? So Dun Huang focuses on food from Lanzo, and Lanzo, if you guys have eaten Chinese food, it's known for noodles, Lanzo hand-pulled noodles, that's a famous spot in Chinatown, but this spot is, is taking it a step further with the cuisine. Here, we have lamb shoulder. And you know what is really interesting about this dish, Andrew? It's called in Chinese, Huang Men Yang Rou. It's one of my favorite dishes from our mom's home province of Shandong. If you guys have ever had this lamb shoulder dish or this Da Par Ji, which is big plate chicken dish, it's actually a chicken and lamb dish first, and the noodles are just there for filler to soak up all the sauce. Flavors look explosive. All yeah, right, yeah, yo, it's all going on. Piece of lamb is falling off the bone. Yeah, the meat just melts off. Mm. The lamb is super tender and juicy, and melts in your mouth, and then the noodles are kind of the chew that you can get from it. We have the eggplant salad. I think the eggplant salad is great to cool off. It's a great thing to eat with your spicy food. This is one of my favorite mm -hmm. dishes in the world. Yeah. Da Pan Ji. Da Pan Ji, David, what does that mean? It means it's a big, big plate, plate of chicken. chicken. Just, mm. I love the way wow. that the chicken's chopped up off the bones. Some people, you know, they don't like it because you gotta watch out for bones, but yeah. for me, it just means it tastes better. And oh of course, God. we have to review the Lanzhou La Mian because we are at a Lanzo spot. You know, like you said, it was really the, the red chopped peppers. The finely chopped red chili flakes, man. The scientific name is Lattice Calcarifer, but for the sake of it, we'll call it the Asian sea bass. This is the Asian sea bass, meaty and flavorful. Mm. I actually love that chow mein. This is where it came from. Chow mein, fried noodles, oftentimes gets a bad rap for being like a Chinese-American fake. fake Chinese food. It's not fake food, it's just how it was done or what people thought about it. Steamed egg with fermented rice wine with soup. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's crazy. I feel like I'm drinking some alcohol up in this. Hey. Eight jewel rice. This is sticky rice with eight different things in it. You have uh, 
different types of raisins, nuts, you got red bean. Oh, it's really good. Oh. You know, this is the one place I actually, so far on the list that I hadn't been to, and I've been blown away by it. I thought like this place would come with your family tree. Oh yeah. We gotta keep going, because our next stop is a really cool spot called Hunan Slurp Shop. We are probably at the nicest looking with the best architecture restaurant. Yes, and most visually appealing too. I mean, even the tomatoes are peeled. Hunan salad, man. It's almost like a uh, little like duck egg roll in eggplant. Got a little pepper in there, a little bit of that thousand year old egg. Eggplant, yo, that was smooth. Cherry tomatoes marinated in plum sauce. This is like a great summer food. Wow, this is incredible. This is the smoked pork with tofu. So it's like you got kind of like a meat substitute with the real meat next to it. I'm gonna try a piece with a little bit of that chili oil. This is a house made chili oil. It's the smoothness and it's the lack of preservatives. This is the hometown Lu Fun. So this is like, got the rice noodles. So that egg off. Oh my gosh, they have crispy pork here. Nice, smooth, subtle taste. All the food at Hunan Slurp Shop is very smooth. My favorite thing here was definitely duck eggs and the eggplant. Mm -hmm. I gotta tell you something about this cherry tomatoes. You know I'm a big fan of like side dishes and pickled stuff. Tomatoes now is on that list of refreshing side dishes. I think that Hunan Slurp Shop has been, of the three places, the most elegant. I agree. And on that note, let's keep it moving. All right, David, we are here at Dian Kitchen. They serve Yunnan street food. You have a tofu rice noodle. Now this is a little bit different than other mi shan slash rice noodle dishes we've been having because you have soft tofu in there. Those flavors are kicking. Really? So I got the Dong Chuan rice noodle. A nice light flavor, but like I said, anything with rice noodles kind of gives you that smoothness. These are called hometown street potato. Boiled or steamed potato tossed in hot sauce. So I will say you're definitely saving on some calories here. This spot was cool because the vibe is different than a lot of other spots we went to. It's small, it kind of feels like basement, backyard. We did hear from some Chinese New York foodies that in terms of authentic Yunnan Mishin, Dian is the best spot. I had to get this uh, mugua shui, a gelatinous sweet water with some gelatin in it. That's kind of like a dessert soup. Dessert broth of the mouth-watering chicken, the ko shui ji. Ko is mouth, shui is water, ji is chicken. You ever think you'd be a Chinese teacher? <laughs> oh my gosh. So Dian, it's an expression in Yunnan, kind of like a, how maybe New Yorkers might say, like this is like the Empire State. Dian Province. Dian Province, man. Shout out to Dian, food was delicious, on to the next. meaning happy, sha meaning shrimp, crawfish, lobster. We had actually eaten here before, and we were wondering if it was at all influenced by like the boiling crab, the right. boil. She said it's not. It's more influenced by the Chinese style, because crawfish is very popular in Mala China. Waigu. At first you think it's like every other beef skewer, but then you start to taste that fat melt down in your mouth. I predict that you're not gonna eat as much of this. Was it? Pork kidneys. How did they get the pork kidneys to taste like pork belly? That's interesting. What is the radish here for? Is it for a uh, cleanser palate? This is crab legs. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh! <laughs> oh! 
This is how you crack crabs with your teeth, by the way. Check out this piece of crab I got, though. Or this is the piece that you're working for right here. I'm gonna dip it back into the sauce. Oh. Wow. We are moving on to the cold crawfish. David, you have a spicy one. I have the sweet one. I rip the head off and drink it because you're gonna taste the wine inside, like I'm told. That has been soaking up all the plum rice wine for 48 hours. That is so sweet. Bing Gotta give the duck head. Oh, look at that meat that's coming off. Really good duck flavor. If you can get through the squeamish part of eating a duck head, this is actually flavor-wise one of my favorite dishes. We don't usually get the yao tiao, aka yao tiao, aka Chinese donut in here with the mala dish. But this is used as a carb to kind of soak all the flavors up. On to the last spot, Lumos Kitchen. Kitchen in the East Village. And Lumos Kitchen is fascinating because it is a mixture between French and Chinese food. First off, we have a variety of XLBs. Getting it real quick. I started Lumos around like 2014. It's supposed to be like a new take on Mapo Tofu. Chinese bread dough under it is a deep fried bread dough, and then we layer. Mapo tofu on top, and then we put cheese and uh, king crab on it. I loved finding the crab in there too, because it kind of reminds me of crab mac and cheese. So that's Ooh. our that's one of our signature dish, lobster fried rice. Wow! This is like traditional fried rice, but cooked with the French technique. Very buttery. The hong shao roe is so tender. I do think the chef's technique allow the hong shao roe to feel light. Yo, this is the tuna tartare, wasabi, mango, tuna, seaweed chip. I gotta say, that is maybe the, dare I say, most refreshing tuna tata I've ever had. Oh my god. Wish I could eat more. I could see, especially a lot of non-Asian people coming here to like, close business deals or like, have birthday dinner. I feel like this might be, of the, all the spots we went to, you might see more Caucasian supermodels here. Yo, you guys, thank you so much for joining us on this East Village New <clears throat> Chinese Food Crawl. It was incredible. Just so glad to meet this new generation of Chinese that are doing things differently. But for the longest time, the image of Chinese goods, Chinese food has been low end. A certain amount of Asian Americans and Chinese Americans bought into that image. People from China, they don't want to accept it. They say, no, no, this is not the image. And let me show you my image of Chinese. All right, everybody, that wraps up our video. Hopefully you guys saw some new stuff. In the comments below, please let us know what dishes you saw in this video that you would like to try. If there's any other areas are kind of having this Asian cuisine renaissance of any type, we're interested in knowing what's going on in your neighborhood, in your city. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. We're the Fung Bros, and until next time, we out. Peace. And the idea behind it is it was like Baiju, you know. I thought it was like one of the most underrated liquor in the whole world. And also, part of the reason because I think people have a misunderstanding about Chinese cuisine. So I kind of want people to learn more about it. That's why I started this whole thing. Wow, I like that mission a lot. <laughs>